Okay, this is our hazard house. We bring this into the schools to help uh, students learn about different dangers and hazards that are in their home. And they learn because it's, it's a visual uh, learning tool. And, and students, especially younger students, learn by uh, visual aspects a lot better than they do just me telling them. So we bring this in and we ask the kids to think that this is their home. And we go through each room, and as we go through the rooms, there are several hazards in each one of these rooms that we try to correct. And as we go through it, we'll ask the kids, okay, what room is this? And, and they'll tell me that it's a bathroom. And then, we'll, if you can see, this little boy's, you know, taking a bath, and he's reaching for an electric radio. And we have things in this house that smoke and spark and, and make noise, like smoke detectors. And this particular one will spark. And when that happens, the kids will understand that that's not a good thing, and we need to eliminate that. So we'll move to eliminate that radio, and we say, hey, can we have a rubber duck and a shampoo and soap? And most of the kids laugh and say, yes, that's, that's not a problem. We move through the house. We talk, go down to different rooms again, asking them. We'll go into a computer room or a den or an office. And the same thing with overloading circuits. Okay, they'll plug too many things in. You have computers, you have monitors, you have a clock radio, you have a lamp. And that can overload a, a uh, circuit, cause it to heat up, and when that heats up again, it creates a problem which could cause a fire. We want to remove that. So we tell the, the students, first of all, they don't touch plugs, but if they, could add, if they see that, they can tell their parents, hey, Firefighter Bill said, you put a, fire a uh, power strip in there and it'll be much safer. And then we continue to move on. We talk about the kitchen, about, you know, you have cleansers and things like that that sometimes are underneath the cabinets where little kids can actually get a hold of them, squirt themselves in the face, drink them if they think they're, especially some of these things look blue and green like Kool-Aid. We want to eliminate those. And we want to make sure that, that either those cabinets will lock or we put the stuff in the higher cabinets so the smaller kids can't get a hold of them. So we want to eliminate the hazards in that room. All right. Other things in the kitchen that get hot are things like stove, oven. We talk about not touching pots and pans on the stove. Things get hot, and we also talk about things still happen. And if things burn, like someone forgets something's on the stove, we have smoke that comes out of these pots, and we'll show that, hey, you know, mom or dad was cooking something, got distracted, started the, a stove on fire, and what do we do? We want to put that out. So we tell them that they need a proper lid, and they're going to use pot holders or oven mitts, and they're going to take that lid and they're going to smother that fire. If they don't have that lid, we ask them to hopefully that they have fire extinguishers. If they don't have a fire extinguisher, we want them to call us, which is 911, so the fire department can come put it out. The whole point is to get rid of the hazards in each room or have things that can protect you if something does happen. Staircases. One of the biggest problems we have is people fall. Okay? And there's a little boy, and I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but there's some things on the stairs, and the little boy actually fell, looks like a baseball bat and a, and a ball, some books, and that's why he fell. So what do we want to do? We want to clean those stairs off so it's a nice, safe staircase. We'll go in, we'll clean it off. Now we have a nice, safe staircase for mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, and everybody to climb up and down. One of the things that we talk about down here is playing with matches. I ask the kids, do we ever touch matches or lighters? Naturally, they're going to tell me no. Matches and lighters are for, for mom and dad as tools. And uh, a lot of times I make the reference that, you know, with birthday cakes, we have candles, and mom and dad will use a match or a lighter to light their, their birthday candles. And that's how it's a tool. But would we ever touch them? No. And then we have a scenario where this little boy down here didn't listen. And mom was upstairs taking a nap, and he decided to go play with the lighters or matches and he started a fire and as you can see where does the smoke go smoke goes up that's where we get into do we have smoke detectors in the homes and smoke detector goes off hopefully this alerts everybody in the home especially mom mom can get up mom goes over to feel the door that door looks like it's hot we asked the students would, would mom want to open that and let that heat and smoke get into her bedroom and naturally they're going to say no and they're correct so, mom needs to do something else. They had an escape plan put together. Mom stays low because where does smoke go? It goes up. So we want to be down low. She moved over and climbed out the window. 
and down and went outside of their meeting place, which they've established already. If anything happened in the home, this is where we will go outside and everybody meets. That way we can go one, two, three, four, five. Everybody's out. Great. Fire department comes in. They can let us know everybody's out, and then we can just take care of the fire or whatever the problem is. Uh, another thing that we utilize in this home is the living room. The biggest thing we utilize the living room for is the fact that we want to show that we need to stay low below the smoke. Up here is going to fill up with smoke. The scenario is really is dad is actually smoking a cigarette. He falls asleep. When he falls asleep, he drops the cigarette, starts the, the sofa on fire. Okay? As it starts to smoke, and we usually put this car up to show that the chair is burning, we ask, where does smoke go again? It goes up. Where would you want to be? We want to be below the smoke. And then we point out, as you can see, the smoke rolling across the ceiling. So, where do we want to be? We want to be below it. So dad, because hopefully he hears the, the smoke detectors goes off, stays very low. You can see where he's at. It's nice and clear. If he stood up, he'd be in smoke where he'd have to breathe in smoke and he couldn't see as well. This way when he stays low, he can see. He doesn't have to breathe the smoke in. He goes out the door, again out to his meeting place, and everybody's safe. Another area we talk about is this area down here. And I ask the students, what is that? And it can be a laundry room, it can be a utility room, it can be a basement. There's a lot of things in here. A lot of people use those for storage facilities. And then things get in here that shouldn't be. And we, we start asking the kids, okay, what's this? And they're well, it's a lawnmower. Does that belong in the house? No, it belongs out in the garage. And we keep moving things out of here, like the gas can that goes with the, the lawnmower, the barbecue grill. Does that belong in the house? No. Where does it belong? Outside. Absolutely. But even if it's outside, does that get hot? Sure it does. It's very similar to the stove. We cook with it, it gets hot. Do we ever play around it? Absolutely not. So even if it is outside, it's still something they have to be careful with. And as we go through this, we also have things in here for the adults. These are carbon monoxide sources, such as your hot water heater, your furnace, your gas dryer, gas stove, fireplace. And these things are carbon monoxide sources. That's why we're supposed to have carbon monoxide detectors in our homes. And the biggest thing what we're trying to do is clean up that utility room so we have a nice, clean utility area or basement, and we've made that a safer place to be. Okay? So that's how this is utilized. It's very surprising when I'll come back the following week to teach another class of how much these guys remember. They seem to not forget anything from the electrical appliances near water to uh, putting uh, cleansers and things away, and a little boy tripping on the stairs, they pretty much, with the, if I ask the entire class, they don't miss a thing. So it's a very good visual learning tool.